Hi guys, and welcome back to my shop. Today I wanted to show you how I build lightweight but strong hatch covers. A lot of people tend to use light ply or plywood for their hatch covers, and that's fine. Um, but when you're trying to save weight or remove weight from a model, this is a great alternative that works really well. Uh, first of all, let me start off by saying that uh, this is not a solution for everyone, but if you're trying to uh, put your plane on a diet while you're building it, this, this, this could save you quite, quite a few grams, okay? Um, so let's start off here. Uh, first, let's talk about our, uh, our materials. The first thing you always want to do when you start a job in modeling is get everything together so you don't have to go and, and look for things while you're trying to do the, the task. Uh, as you can see, we've laid down some wax paper, and we have our 1 16th piece of balsa hatch, which has been fitted, and the holes have also been made for the screws. Um, we also have our resin, okay, a small mixing cup, something to stir the resin with when we mix it. An exacto hobby knife, a single edge razor blade, which is a must in this hobby, and we have a the way I, I uh, way I personally apply the resin is I use a, a a slit business card which I've cut in half because this is such a small area we don't want a full card we just want a little bit of space so we'll get back to that in a second. The materials we're going to use and this is what makes it strong is a, a, a material called carbon fiber veil. Okay, as you can see, you can see through it. It's very lightweight. Uh, it doesn't go around compound curves well, but it does, you know, curve, and it's, it's pliable and can be used. And we'll put that under a layer of three-quarter ounce cloth or 0.75 ounce cloth. And then, of course, we'll use pill ply, which will smooth everything out. And we'll do this, <coughs> excuse me, we'll do this on both sides of the hatch. Now, the thing I want to explain about what makes this hatch strong, a lot of people think it's the fiberglass, but it's not. It's this, it's the veil. Carbon fiber veil is meant to be used as a composite material. That is, it's meant to be layered sandwiched between two materials such as this fiberglass and the wood and then once we apply the resin and it dries this will become extremely stiff okay um, so I'll tell you what let me get everything mixed up and we'll come right back and start fiberglassing this Welcome back guys. As you can see, I'm in the process of mixing up the resin right now. Uh, the, the thing you want to do is make sure you mix it really, really well. Because if you don't, you will have problems. And it's not much fun to have to clean off. Uh, I'm using uh, a Zap product, uh, Zepoxy uh, finishing resin and it, it works really well for me everybody has their preferences of what they like to use but for me this works fine and as you can see it doesn't take very much matter of fact I've mixed up way too much so now all I'm going to do is I've got my carbon fiber veil down on, on top of the the balsa and then I have my three quarter ounce cloth on top and then I'm going to basically pour the resin out. And I like to do it this way because if I give it just a moment, it will soak in a little bit and help everything stick when I start spreading. So now I'm going to start spreading the material, the I'm sorry, the resin out over the material. And I try and pick up any excess and put it back in the container there because we don't want a lot coming off the edges or that'll just be more that we have to sand right so 
I'm just working it in slowly and picking up the excess. Don't get in a rush when you do this because it just takes time to get it right. Okay. Uh, continue to spread the resin out. Now you may see, I don't know if you can see this or not, but the wood's starting to curl a little bit. And that's not a problem at all. I'll show you how we'll take care of that. Okay. Now, some people like to put the resin down in two steps, and that's fine. They can do the stick-down coat and then do the, uh, the, the, the flow coat, as they call it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, since I have everything covered here, and it's a small area, I'm going to do all this at once, okay? So now I'm going to take that leftover resin I had and pour it back on here, okay? Help some of that out a little bit. And I'm just going to spread it out, okay, roughly spread it out like this. I'm not real concerned about getting it all even, just making sure that everything is covered, okay? That's, that's the important part with pill ply is to make sure that everything is covered. And once that is done, then I'm just, just simply, let me get a little more resin out of here. We need, is, we need a little bit more. Maybe I didn't mix up enough. But that's okay. We'll work with it. So I'm going to spread this out over the entire area. And as you can see, there's some lines there. That's okay. The, the pill ply is going to soak up the excess here, so I'm not really worried about this this much. Okay. So now we take the pill ply. We take our other piece of card. And we basically work it down. Now you can see this dark area where the resin is starting to soak into the pill ply. And that's what, exactly what we want. You don't want any light spaces. So you just want to go around the edges here and work it all down. Work the excess out. And the pill ply is going to pick a lot of this up. Okay. As you notice, I didn't use very much resin at all because it doesn't take much, okay? A lot of people tend to use way too much resin and it makes the part or the model heavy when you do that. Uh, so once again, I'm just working along here, working these corners out, making sure that they're all covered. And if you notice, some of the resin's actually coming through the pill ply, and that's exactly what we want it to do. You can actually use that to go around different areas and work in any light spots that you may see. Okay. So now we have that worked in pretty darn good. I feel pretty good about it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece of wax paper uh, that's good and flat. I'm going to lay over that and then I'm going to take these two weights and place them there. As a matter of fact, what I think I'll do, let me, I talk about being prepared in mind. Uh, let me grab this piece of wood. This may work even better. This won't leave any indentions. And put that weight on top. Now what will happen is the, uh, the resin will dry and the wood will be dead flat, okay? Uh, so we're going to let this dry and we're going to come back in a little while and remove the pill ply, flip it over and do the other side. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, we're back. Uh, it's been about four hours letting the resin set up. It's not completely dry, but it's dry enough. We can pull the pill ply. So I'm going to remove my weights, the piece of wood. Peel back this extra piece of wax paper, and then I'm just going to gently work this pill ply off the hatch. Now notice I'm not going real fast. You just want to take your time. Don't get in a rush. Just peel it off, okay? 
And there we have a nice hard flat finish. Let's pull it up. And then what I'll do is I'll trim these edges off now. And then we're going to uh, glass the other side. So let me go ahead and trim all this up. And we'll be right back in just a moment. Okay, guys, and we're back. Let me reposition this where you can see it a little better. Uh, as you can see, this side is complete. And look, it's not warped or anything. It's just straight as an arrow, okay? Uh, so once all this sets up, it becomes nice and hard. Uh, the beauty of this setup, the, it's a little bit of extra work, but it saves about half the weight of a plywood hatch cover. So... If you're trying to save grams, this is a good place to do it. And uh, so right now I'm just mixing up more resin, as you can see. Again, just making sure it's all mixed well. Then once again, I'm going to take my carbon fiber veil, lay it down, and lay my glass cloth down on top of it. And then I'm going to Dribble a bit of uh, resin on here. Okay. We're just going to basically do the same thing we did on the other side. Uh, let me grab a card. I was ill prepared for that. But no problem. They're right here. Handy. So uh, I'll just take this and cut it in half. And then I'll just start spreading. Again, just making sure that everything darkens up and everything is filled and there's no light spots. Everything should be nice and dark. Okay. Now the real strength here comes from the carbon fiber veil. A lot of people misuse this product. They'll just like glue it in somewhere. They don't understand why it's not that strong. Well, you have to sandwich it between two materials to really realize the strength. And this hatch is a great example of, of where it's useful. So we're, we're going to have a very lightweight hatch that is very, very, very strong. Uh, and so... The offset I've made between my hatch and the and the area where the hatch sits is 332nd. And I'm using a 16th piece of uh, balsa. So between the balsa, the two pieces of carbon fiber veil, and the two pieces of glass, it works out. And by the time it's primed, it all kind of levels up to about 332nd. So now I'm going to simply take this extra resin here. Again, doing this all at once so we don't have to do two steps. And working it, working it in here. Uh, this, this is not a speedy process, so don't get in a hurry. You've got plenty of time with the resin. Just take your time and do what you need to do to get it right. One of the biggest things I see other modelers do wrong is they try and rush things. And you just don't need to rush things when you're, when you're modeling. Okay, so we've got a nice layer on there. Now I'm going to take the peel ply, lay it on, and then take this other piece of card and basically work it down. And remember, again, we don't want to see any white spots under here or light colored spots. We just want everything to be dark. And that tells us that the, the resin is being absorbed by the pill ply. And it doesn't take long. It's just, just a matter of going over every, every spot. You want to make sure you touch every spot on the hatch. And, uh, and that's really it. So now we'll take our same piece of uh, wax paper, lay it over that, put the wood over it, and then some weight on it. And guess what? Time to wait again. So <laughs> I'm going to uh, 
turn the camera off and let this sit for a few hours and then I'll come back and we'll clean it up. But stay tuned. We'll be right back. Thanks. Okay, guys, we're back. Uh, I've removed the, uh, the weight and the, the pill ply and trimmed everything up and shot a couple of thin coats of primer. And as you can see, our hatch cover turned out good. I usually don't paint the inside, but you can if you want to. Uh, there's a few small spots I need to putty up to get it ultra smooth, but as you can see, it's pretty darn good already. Uh, so anyway, that's how you make a lightweight uh, hatch. And what I usually do is now at this point, I'll go back and fit it and uh, sand the edges so I have plenty of room for the covering or, or whatever type of model you're doing. You know, you may not need to do that. Uh, another thing you might do is once you sand, use thin CA and seal the edges with thin CA. Uh, just to keep everything hard. But here's the thing. This hatch is, and, and I've done this consistently, uh, they end up being about half the weight of a plywood uh, hatch cover. So... Something to consider, uh, just a little tip on how to make lightweight hatch covers, and I'll snap a few pictures, and uh, you guys can see how it'll all go together. But anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, hope you enjoyed this. I'll try and do more videos as I do kind of unique things like this. If you have any questions, be sure and ask me in my thread on rcscalebuilder.com. Talk to you later.